Hi everybody, this is Dr. A. In our next video on lab instrumentation and analytic techniques, we are going to look at mass spectrometry. So um, mass spectrometry is used as a detector to identify samples that are eluding from uh, gas chromatographic or high performance quick chromatography columns. When coupled with other techniques, it has powerful analytical capabilities with widespread clinical applications, but it can be time consuming. So the applications of mass spectrometry are structural and molecular weight determinations. So the identification of drugs of abuse in urine toxicology testing, the identification of unknown compounds in toxicology by identifying the molecular formula. So think of designer drugs and other just unknowns or poisons or things that are trying to be investigated, especially in forensics. Um, liquid chromatography mass spectrometry can be used to measure vitamin D, testosterone, and immunosuppressant drugs, and all kinds of other things. Uh, it is more sensitive and specific than immunoassays. Uh, the application in proteomics is in the investigation of protein products that are encoded by genes, which is important for disease detection. So in that, you can have the discovery of new disease markers that can be used to diagnose and monitor a disease. So the mass spectrometer has uh, several different components, but um, the first one is going to be uh, the sample introduction and ionization um, component in or step of the procedure, if you will. So we're going to look at several types of ionization. The first one is electron impact ionization. Um, and this type of ionization, energetic electrons, are emitted from a heated filament and they interact with the gas phase atoms um, or molecules of the sample while these electrons are trying to get to the collector electrode to the other side. Uh, this needs to happen in a vacuum. And this results in the formation of charged molecular ions and fragments in the sample. The molecular fragments um, are going to be according to their molecular structure, and um, it is widely used in mass spectrometry. So this is a uh, graphic representation of this, of electron impact ionization. So the sample would be introduced into here. This is a vacuum chamber. The electrons are being emitted from this heated filament, and they're crossing over to the electron trap. So they're trying to go this way, while the sample uh, uh, molecules are going this way, and so they collide and interact, and um, the sample molecules then uh, become uh, fragmented and charged as ions, and then they enter the analyzer part of the mass spectrometer. The next type is atmospheric pressure ionization. Um, it is the ion of, uh, source of choice for liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. It does not require a high vacuum. It is a soft ionization technique in which molecular ions are intact. Uh, there are two types of atmospheric pressure ionization. There's electrospray ionization, and there's atmospheric pressure chemical ionization. So electrospray ionization is the most common source of ions for liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. It can be applied to a wide range of biomolecules. It involves passing the liquid chromatographer effluent through a capillary through which a voltage has been applied. The uh, energy is transferred to the solvent droplets, which become charged. The solvent evaporates and the droplets decrease in size and ions are ejected from the droplet. And then individually charged molecules then are drawn into the mass spectrometer. With atmospheric pressure chemical ionization, it is rarely used, but it is very similar to electrospray ionization but there's no charging. Instead, it uses a heated vaporizer. It uses a reagent gas that collides with the analytes to ionize them uh, after they are converted to the gas phase. And then the last ionization technique is ICP, inductively coupled plasma. Uh, it is used for metals at low concentrations. So ICPMS is faster and more precise and sensitive than atomic absorption spectrometry. It can detect uh, from nanograms per liter all the way to 100 milligrams per liter. It can detect multiple elements at one time. It is often used in forensic and toxicology. And one of the advantages is it can do speciation of molecules. For example, it can tell the difference between chromium-3 and chromium-6. So chromium-3 
uh, or trivalent chromium. It's chromium that's essential for health and you need it for glucose metabolism. Whereas hexavalent chromium or chromium-6 uh, is a toxin that can lead to cancer. So in ICP, an inductively coupled plasma is a plasma that is energized or ionized by inductively heating the gas with an electromagnetic coil. Uh, it contains a sufficient concentration of ions and electrons to make the gas electrically conductive. Next, we have the mass analyzers. So the mass analyzers generate electric fields that can manipulate the charged molecules to sort them according to their mass to charge ratio. First, there are the beam type designs in that you have the quadrupole mass spectrometer and the ion trap mass spectrometer. So the quadrupole mass spectrometer is the most common mass analyzer used today. Uh, it filters sample ions based on the mass to charge ratio. The detection of these ions is determined by the stability of their trajectory in an oscillating electrical field that is oscillating between those quadrupoles. The electric field on the two set of diagonally opposed rods uh, will allow only ions of a single selected mass to charge value to pass through the analyzer to the detector, and then all other ions are deflected into the rods and then the rods can be scanned from low to high mass to allow ions of increasing mass to enter the analyzer and then be detected. The ion trap mass spectrometer is a modified quadrupole. It is a trapping mass spectrometer. So ions are trapped by a stopping potential on the end of the electrodes to confine the ions. And then the trapped ions are selectively destabilized to enter the detector based on their mass to charge ratio. They effectively trap and store ions, which then concentrates them and yields better sensitivity. These, these are examples of uh, quadrupole designs. Here, you can see here's a quadrupole. Here is uh, a quadrupole uh, mass analyzer. And uh, this is the schematic of it. So you would have the gas chromatographer that's feeding the molecules into the mass spectrometer. So first, it would hit the electron impact ionizer which then ionizes the molecules, and then the, these ions then of the molecules are going to enter the quadrupole uh, ion analyzer and fly through it according to the mass to charge ratio and enter to the detector uh, you know, according to the mass to charge ratio. There is also a time of flight mass analyzer. So the mass to charge ratio is related to velocity, and it is determined by a time measurement in an electrical field of known strength and a known length to the detector. The time required for an ion of a given mass to reach the de detector is a nonlinear function of the mass, with the larger ions that are requiring more time than the smaller ions, and it can achieve a very high resolution. So in a time of flight analyzer, you have a protein mixture that is then ionized, either using electrospray or MALDI ionization. So it is split into little ions, uh, some are bigger, some are smaller, and so the molecules are split, and then they enter the time of flight separation part of the mass analyzer. The smaller uh, ions molecules will um, fly faster through it and hit the detector sooner, and then the large ions are going to be slower, and they will hit the detector last. Next, we have tandem mass spectrometers. So there is um, GC tandem mass spectrometry or um, liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry. They are both used in the clinical lab for the quantitative analysis of routine samples because it has greater selectivity and lower detection limits. Uh, it's often used for detecting inborn errors of metabolism. That's what's done during newborn screening. It can detect, uh, be used to detect cancer, diabetes, various poisons, drugs of abuse, etc. Uh, you can link up to three quadrupoles together. That is the triple quad, and each quadrupole has a separate function. The first quadrupole selects the parent ions of interest by mass to charge. The second quadrupole then functions as a collision cell and fragments the parent ions. And then the third quadrupole acquires the mass of the fragment ions or daughter ions. It can also serve as an ion trap to increase sensitivity. 
Then there's also high resolution mass spectrometry. It can be based on the time of flight uh, mass analyzer, and it can measure a large number of analytes simultaneously in a complex biological matrices. It is often used for drug screening applications. So here's an example of um, the uh, tandem mass spectrometry. So you have a sample that is run through the liquid chromatography column, so high performance liquid chromatography column. Then I, it exits that, it goes through electrospheric ionization, and then it enters the first quadrupole here where the parent ions are going to be scanned and selected. And then the parent ions are going to enter into the second quadrupole, which is a collision cell, which will fragment them. And then the daughter ions then are going to enter the third quadrupole, which is going to detect them. And then the detector is going to send the signal, and you get a uh, spectrum. So the detectors are usually an electron multiplier to detect ions, and then you have to have computers and software also to run these. So um, you need it to control the instrument parameters, and you need it to acquire and analyze data, and uh, then it can compare the data that it has acquired and analyze it against uh, a database library of known mass to charge profiles that is provided by the manufacturer. And so, for example, this is what a mass spectrum of limonene looks like, uh, and that would be sto stored in the library. And if that's what was in the compound, then it would match it up, and then it would tell you the identity of the compound that you analyzed. A little bit on MALDI-TOF and CELDI-TOF. So, um, MALDI-TOF is matrix assisted laser desorption ionization time of flight. It is a um, surface enhanced laser desorption ionization time of flight, is the other one is CELDI. And MALDI and CELDI are the ionization techniques. And the time of flight is this mass spectrometry analyzer. So the application of these techniques is they are used for the analysis of biomolecules such as peptides and proteins and to discover new disease markers. So that would be uh, CELDI you know, and MALDI also, um, CELDITOF and MALDITOF. But then MALDITOF has been mostly used for pathogen identification. So isolated bacterial or fungal colonies can be directly spotted onto the MALDI plate and ionized, which results then in a protein fingerprint of the species. Um, and it is significantly cheaper and faster than the traditional automated biochemical identification techniques that are used in microbiology. I'm going to do a video on MALDI-TOF as a bonus one. I know it's not clinical chemistry related, but it's, a, it's instrumentation related, so we're going to do it. So I will see you in that video pretty soon, and I thank you then for your attention.